Gellert. I've been on guard duty, see. Been walking around the castle all night. A few squirrels spooked me mind. Had a bit of fun not chasing them up trees. Scared off that old fox too. He was after Gwenny's chickens. He's always after Gwenny's chickens. I walked on. Oh, there's a smell in the air. Lift my head up and sniff the gentle breeze coming down from the north. I suspect that I've smelled something ancient. A wild boar, a brown bear. I haven't seen one of them for a while. Maybe it's a wolf. It is a wolf if my instincts are right. It's a bitter smell of the old forest, fusty, dog-like. All smells can be singled out. Takes a little time to work it all out. Will I get there? We haven't had a wolf round here for a few years now. I know people say the fox is sly. But the wolf is the craftiest of them all. I mark my territory. If he's there, he'll know I'm here too. Wait then, and I have reinforcements to call on if needed. It's been a long night, mind. They all are. But somebody's got to do it, eh? i got to watch over my family day and night. I do worry so. Their safety is so important to me. The night shift is over. Whoa. I wander wearily into the kitchen. Gwenny the cook pats my head. Hello, boy, she says. Gives me breakfast. Some cuts of meat from the night before. I thank her. Very nice, I say. I have a full belly. Now the kitchen fire is there and it's inviting me to sleep. I always like to take a nap after food. I scratch at the sheepskin lying on the floor. Aye, Gwenny shouts. She doesn't understand. I circle a few times, check that everything is safe, get comfy, curl up. I deserve to rest for a while. Close my eyes and fall into a deep slumber. I didn't know how long I'd been asleep, but I heard my master's hunting horn in the distance. I didn't wake up. I just dreamed of running through the forest with my master and mistress on horseback, running free with my friends, the excitement of the hunt. The hunting horn blew again. Oh dear, it's for real. Oh dear, dear, I'm late. And by the time I get to the courtyard, they've gone. Why didn't someone come and wake me up? Oh, I should never have fallen asleep. I've let them down. I should be with them. Are they worried that I'm not with them? I'm worried. I'm their favourite. I know. I'll check that everybody is safe in the house. That will make my master happy. Gwenny is safe. She's in the kitchen. 
Oh, what about the baby? I must check on the young prince. I put my head round the nursery door. <laughs> Nurse is busy tucking in the young infant, singing a lullaby as she goes about her business. The only danger I see is an open window on this ground floor. But it is warm this morning, and there is a gentle breeze coming in to cool the child. I just don't want them to catch a cold. I'm happy that they are safe. There is no real danger. I walk on. Out of my way. Nurse shoes me away. She got a pile of clothes. She's off to wash them in the stream. Who's looking after the prince, I ask her. And I go back to the child's room. I'll watch him. Maybe doze a little whilst the baby sleeps. I can sleep with my eyes half shut, don't you know? All is peaceful. I sleep on my nose. My eyes nearly closing. My nose twitches. The air flows through the window, and riding in on a gentle breeze, I smell that smell, the wet dog scent, the ancient old musk that I smelled the night before. I use a low growl to warn off the intruder that I cannot see. I don't want to wake the infant. I hope I'm wrong, but the scent fills my nostrils with horror. Nauseating strong it is. I bark for nurse, I bark for cook, for my friends, but nobody comes. I fear the worst. I knew it. The enormous wolf jumps up and through the window left open by the nurse. He has come for one thing. The baby prince will not be his morning meal if I have anything to do with it. The wolf, bigger and stronger, has not reckoned with my loyalty and tenacity. I launch myself at him to defend the infant. A ferocious fight follows, a battle to the death. We both try to attack the back legs of the other. He rips my ear and blood bursts out. Our teeth clash. The wolf knocks me to the floor, thumping my head against the fireplace, and in so doing, overturns the cradle. The baby falls out. I lie there, dazed. The wolf thinks he has me. The baby cries, the wolf turns, greedy for a feast. He licks his lips and slowly moves towards the infant prince. And in that brief break in the fight, as the wolf gets closer, my head is clear. I summon up all the strength inside me. I must save the baby. I must protect the heir to my Llewellyn. I launch myself at the wolf, sinking my teeth deep into the wolf's neck. The wolf is dead. I collapse, exhausted. I hear in the distance the return from the hunt. I bound out to greet them, so happy to see them home. I count them. They are all safe after their hunting trip. So I tell them what has happened. Quick, I tell everyone, come quick. I have killed the wolf. The infant is safe. Why is your mouth covered in blood? Llewellyn asks me. I have saved your son, good prince. I have killed the wolf. He looks at me strangely. He holds my muzzle. 
wipes the blood off my nose with his glove and smells it. Can you smell the wolf, master? I ask him. Yes, I think he understands. He is a great man. He runs frantically indoors to the child's nursery to search for his infant. He's there, I tell him, in the shadows by the dead wolf. Llewellyn finds the scene of the battle, walls covered in blood, the cradle upturned and no sign of his baby. He sees more blood on the floor. Llewellyn screams like a wild animal from the forest. Wild with rage, he takes his sword and plunges it into my heart. I fall to the floor. The pain is unbearable as I yelp my last breath. Only then does Llewellyn hear his unharmed baby cry from an unlit corner of the room. It's only then that he sees a wolf dead amongst the mess on the floor.